TrueNAS Scale supports two different types of replication, termed as push and pull. The difference between the two is the location of the source data relative to the system that's initiating the replication operation. In this example, we have two systems, our first being eval01, and our second being eval02. We're going to set up a push replication for this configuration. On the eval02 system, ensure that you've created an additional storage pool. In our case, it's named archive pool, and we've chosen a wider RAID Z2 topology. Move to the datasets option, select the archive pool, and click the add dataset button. You'll be creating two new datasets. The first will be named home DIRs for home directories. This will be used to store the home directory for our replication user. Click the Save button. Click on your archive pool once again, and then click on Add Dataset once more. Create a new dataset called Push Replica. In this one, we'll change our compression level again to the GZIP9 compression level. Click on the Save button. While still on the Eval02 system, click on the Credentials option and then Local Users to create our new replication user. Click the Add button to create the new local user. Name this user Push REPL for Push Replication. Check the slider beside Disable Password, as we won't be using a regular text password to log into this account interactively. Expand the Home Directory option and select the new Home DIRS directory you created under your archive pool. Scroll down and check the dialog box for Create Home Directory to ensure that we create a new subdirectory within the Home Directories folder. Finally, uncheck the box for Samba authentication, as we will never actually be signing directly into a network share with our replication user. Click the Save button, and then return to the eval01 system interface. Open the Data Protection menu. Under Replication Tasks, click the Add button. Select your source location as On This System, and use the tree view to expand and select the Evaluation Eval Data subfolder. For Destination Location, use the drop down to select On a Different System. A new set of drop down menus will appear. Under SSH Connections, select Create New, which will cause a window to appear, prompting you to create a new SSH connection. Give this connection a name that speaks to its purpose, such as eval01 to eval02. For the URL, enter the HTTPS and either the IP address or the DNS name of your server. Under Admin Username, enter the username of admin followed by your administrator password for the TrueNAS web UI. In the Username field, enter the user we created, Push REPL. Check off the dialog box to enable passwordless sudo for ZFS commands, as the user we created on the destination is a limited permission user. Select the Private Key option and click Generate New. For the cipher, leave the default selection of Standard, there are options for reduced cipher security, but those should only be used in a purely trusted network. Click the Save button. You'll be prompted to confirm the use of sudo for ZFS commands. Ensure that you do click the Use sudo button here, otherwise the replication will not succeed. Back in the Replication Wizard, expand the directory tree to select the destination of Archive Pool and your new Push Replica dataset. Check off the dialog box to indicate to replicate custom snapshots. In this case, we'll again change our naming schema from Auto to Manual in order to capture the manually created snapshots we took earlier in our guide. Click the Next button to continue. Change your replication schedule once again to Run Once unchecking the Make Destination Dataset Read-Only option, and will again extend the snapshot lifetime on the destination to a two-month period. Click the Start Replication button. As before, the task is scheduled and will show a status of Pending. 
If the display does not automatically refresh to success, again, navigate back to the dashboard and then back to the data protection screen once more. You'll see the success dialog open along with the logs where you can see that a push was successful from the evaluation to the archive pool. To confirm that the snapshots were sent, we can return to the eval02 system, click on either the storage or datasets tab, and look at the push replica dataset. You'll notice that under data protection, total snapshots, we'll see that now a new snapshot exists. In contrast to a push replication, a pull replication causes the receiving system to sign into the source to retrieve data. This scenario works well for isolated recovery vault style configurations. Since your primary system has no ability to sign into the destination, the second copy can't be inadvertently deleted through administrator error or deliberately deleted by malicious actions such as ransomware.